plastic drums, poly pipe, baling twine and silage wrap have improved farming immeasurably. But when it's no longer needed, it's difficult to get rid of. Only a tiny amount is recycled and there are tough penalties for illegal disposal. With China now refusing to process Australia's plastic waste, Landline reporter Kerry State takes a look at the local solutions being developed for this growing pollution problem. It protects crops, stores chemicals, transports water, controls weeds. Plastic is a very versatile farming tool. It's also a major polluter. Well, agriculture probably makes up about a third of the, the plastic that's used. The sad part is, is that out of all of the plastic that is used in agriculture, only 5.2% is actually recovered for recycling. This is a familiar sound on the farm Cameron Lowen manages near Albury in New South Wales, as roll after roll of silage is unwrapped to keep around 3,000 merinos fed during a very dry year. Last year we sort of only were uh, dabbling in the small numbers. We only sort of had a bit over 100 rolls, whereas this year we've had 1,000. Um, so there's still quite a lot of wrap, and so um, it, for us it's, yeah, it's quite a big issue, really. Silage is covered in plastic to keep oxygen out and preserve the quality of the feed. But when the wrap is no longer needed, it's often burned or buried on farms, despite the introduction of some tough penalties. Yeah, well, laws aren't uniform, and that's one of the great challenges. In South Australia, the, the penalties for um, burning or burying on farm are up to $2 million and four years imprisonment. And that's been in place since 2011. Victoria introduced new legislation that went through in December of last year, and it's $1.6 million and five years imprisonment. And then you go to other states where there's no great penalty. I mean, you talk to any farmer, no one wants to burn it. Um, but what other options are there? There hasn't been any probably easy solutions. Now, Mr Lowen and his neighbours do have a better option. Holbrook Landcare has launched a silage wrap and plastic twine collection service. The pilot project started in 2017 and it was a very small project. We had one skip bin at the Holbrook landfill site and we were just overrun with um, landholders wanting to be part of it. Around 34 tonnes of plastic have already been picked up, enough to cover the MCG more than 30 times. And there's growing interest from other regions to take this community project to the next level. I think it's good that someone's on board with, with having a crack at this and, and hopefully, look, it's a real winner. Because, um, I mean, obviously, if there's people like me that have got quite a lot of silage wrap sitting around and wondering what to do with it. There's going to be plenty more. What's collected on farms ends up at Plastic Forests Recycling in Albury. This truckload of wrap is just a tiny portion of what the factory processes. So we are surrounded by a mountain of plastic here. How much of this is agricultural plastic waste? We're probably doing around 15 to 20% agricultural film waste. We've got the silage film here, yep. and we've got lots of the uh, bunker tarps. And we've also got the big grain tubes and cotton films as well. Shredding and cleaning the big plastic sheets comes with a few sticky issues. The plastic films are a bit of a nightmare. It's like dealing with chewing gum. You've got big pieces of plastic you're trying to make very small and it's very stretchy. The difficulty with the agricultural side of life is, is that you end up getting a lot of rocks, a lot of stones, you get steel ploughs and you know the odd dead fairy animal that sort of crawls into the heap. The factory turns the waste into resin, the commodity in the plastics market. It then value adds by making a range of products, including garden edging, cable covers and wheel stoppers. After nine years in the business, David Hodge concedes making a profit out of plastic film is tough going. 
that is the challenge. I mean, recycling doesn't take place until someone buys a product. You can have the best facilities in the world, the best collection programs in the world, but people actually have to buy products made with recycled content. Finding more ways to turn our plastic leftovers into viable products has never been more important. Until recently, Australia relied on others to take care of its rubbish, exporting most of it. But that market has been severely restricted. After China imposed an import ban on plastic waste a couple of years ago, and other countries followed suit. The bottom line is it's got nowhere to go. It is absolutely, it's, it's collapsed. You know, the traders that used to be able to send it overseas, that's collapsed. The, there's a few manufacturers, a handful in Australia that can handle it, and the oversupply is just kill, ki killing us. There's just way, way too much plastics. The other side of the coin has meant that it's really focused everybody's attention to say, well, hey, there is a domestic problem and we need to do something about that. Mate, have you uh, finished planting for the today? Stephen Richards has set up a national program called Farm Waste Recovery. So how many of these are you actually putting out in the paddock? Um, total fertiliser use in tonnes, we probably go through close to a thousand odd yeah, bags of fertiliser per season. And with, the with industry like... support, he runs a collection service to give single-use fertiliser bags a future. Today, he's in North Queensland, where the program was first adopted. 80% of the bags used on cane farms in the region are now picked up. With those recycling uh, facilities now, there's, there's less and less impact from the farming system on the environment, which is, which is what we want, because we want to be here for the long term and where fertilisers is a, a key part of our business. Many of the bags are partly processed at this recycling plant near Townsville, where they're compressed into more palatable blocks before being shipped offshore. But just like at many recycling depots, the China ban has been bad for business. And as demand has dropped, the piles of loose bags and plastic irrigation pipes have risen. The value of all the plastics fell and also the amounts that we can actually export fell quite a bit. But you've got to go looking for, for the markets now. So and maybe even go as far as European markets now. As well as looking further afield, many in the industry say it's time for Australia to take more responsibility for its own rubbish. Stephen Richards has an ambitious plan to build 26 resin factories, which he says will be able to turn all of Australia's agricultural plastic waste into products as long as there's the demand. We've been asked to consider manufacturing all things from pallets uh, through to field bins in an agricultural sense, but also in an urban sense, there's no reason why we can't manufacture things like sound abatement on the sides of highways or uh, things along those lines where you can actually get 10 years of life out of that unit of plastic. First, he has to convince governments to fund part of the $160 million project. The cost of not doing something is far greater than the cost of actually doing something. The federal and state governments are currently working on a national waste plan, which includes reducing plastic pollution and increasing demand for recycled materials. Good morning. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Are you going to hand in some drums? Uh, yep, I've got about 30 here, so... Uh... One agricultural program already yep. achieving that is the drum muster. OK, so these have all been cleaned today? Yep, uh, I've given them triple rinse. They're all clean. Lids have been removed? Lids are off, yep. Farmers drop off empty plastic chemical containers at hundreds of sites around the country. Funded by chemical manufacturers, the program recycles around half of all the drums sold in Australia. Over 20 years, we have collected over 33.5 million drums around Australia. That equates to 38,000 tonnes diverted from landfill and into recycling. While some types of agricultural waste, like stretchy silage wrap, pose problems for processors, these drums are relatively easy to work with and are turned into more than just plastic bales. 
We have 25 processes around Australia and they, um, the majority of those processes keep, keep the plastic on shore and it gets processed into recycled products in Australia, such as uh, cable covers um, and um, fence posts and, and, and outdoor furniture and the like. One of those processes is a farming family that has come full circle. The Westons at Parks in New South Wales turn resin from recycled drums into strong fence posts that can be electrified. Initially, it was just to keep feral animals off their own crops. We had a problem that we needed to fix um, and then we looked around for a solution and, and right at our doorstep was the, the, uh, the resource there to be able to use and, and uh, turn into something useful. They've now turned it into a business. With around 3,500 tonnes of plastic returned to farms with a new look and purpose. The lifespan of a drum is normally one to two years. But by then the, the, the chemical is used in that drum and, and it becomes a waste product. Uh, by us recycling it and turning it into our posts, we expect uh, life around 25 to 30 years. It's clear some are making headway in the war on agricultural waste. But the industry has a long way to go to clean up after itself and give all its plastic tools an extended life. Oh, I think we're all responsible for for um, you know, minimising the waste that we create and, and we're all responsible to look after our own environments and, and in turn the environment will uh, love us back.